Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Got a couple of guests. Any of you on my online workshop know that Jake, my son, was my cameraman for the first two years. Jake is away serving a two-year Christian mission for a church. Uh, he's in upstate New York. And Elder Tory and Elder Draycott are serving here in Atlanta, Canada. They both happen to be from Alberta. We get them from all over. And the reason we're doing this is because Elder Draycott's dad is taking a dovetail workshop that I'm teaching in Edmonton uh, in two weeks. And Elder Draycott, who's at the end of his two-year mission, is going to be there as well. He actually gets home on Friday. He's coming to do the workshop on Saturday. So I'm going to give him a little... I'm going to make him better than his father before he gets there. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of it, and I'll get him to kick in and do some more. I'm going to use his father's nice new plane. Mike, we'll try not to get any scratches on it. I'm using my shooting board, boys, elders, to square the edges of the pieces. And the nice thing about a shooting board, see how much better that came out than the last piece? It's nice and clean. The nice thing about a shooting board is it prevents me from having to try to balance the plane on the same piece of wood if I had it stuck in the vise. Alright, so the ends are nice and clean, easier to see, easier to see our knife lines. Your phone, your phone turned on? No. Alright, so we're going to use several tools. I'm going to lay them out here. Actually, we've reduced the number of tools that we need to use. We have a marking gauge, we have a fret saw, we have a dovetail saw, we have something called a skew block plane, we have a dovetail marker, no? We'll use a square. A knife? Mm. Have a, a marking knife. <clears throat> we need a couple of chisels. I'll use a quarter and a half. I'm going to grab the quarter. And what else? A mallet. And that's about it. And of course, we need a pin. I'll use my red one. It shows up a little bit better on the camera. So when we do this joint, this piece is going to fit into that piece. So when I cut this piece, I have to cut it deep enough so that when the joint goes together it'll be flush. Don't want it to be too deep, don't want it to be not deep enough. So I need to set my marking gauge to the thickness of this piece. And the easiest way to do it is to set one on top of the other. Put your gauge on the one, loosen this, and let that drop down. And then when I lock it, that now represents this thickness. So I can take that and I can scribe a line is a nice clean cut line on the board and because these pieces are the same thickness I can do the same thing on this one but this one is actually going to have what's called the tails in it so I got to do the edge of that one as well as the end. You want now, to mark one pin and one tail? Now Elder Draycott has never used a dovetail saw before am I correct? All right so you're seeing this first hand we'll call this the tail board aka Dave's suggestion and this one the pin board so the first thing we're going to do is going to take our tailboard, but we're going to cut a little rabbit. And what we do is put this in the vise. Anybody know where my other bench dog went? There it is. We'll put that in the vise. And this plane, when I take the side plate off, it lays the blade out here in the edge. So we call this a rabbiting plane. And I'm going to adjust the fence so that the point of that blade is cutting right on that line. And then I'm going to make a couple of passes. And that's going to leave me with a little shoulder. Now depending on the depth, I'm going to go one more. Okay, that gives me a nice little shoulder right there. And that'll help reference the two pieces against each other. So we'll put the board in the vise. And using my square, how come I don't have a dovetail marker, Dave? Don't we make thousands of those? Must have sold them all. Our shop is in a little bit of disarray because we're in the process of making a two new tool cabinet. That's what we're doing on our online power tool workshop. So everything is all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out what we call our half pins. So we'll put a square line across the end and we'll do the same thing over here, try to get them even. I'm just going to do one dovetail on this. So I'll divide that in half approximately and I'm going to put a line here and a line here. 
Now I'm going to guess at these angles just because I don't have my little dovetail marker, but on this side of the board I'm going to put about a 10 degree slope from that bottom line that we did with the marking gauge up to these marks that we just put across the end of the board. Okay, I'm going to put an X on the side that we want to cut on. And I also want to make sure that this piece is standing plumb, so I'm going to put my square up against it like that. And it's not quite, so I'm just going to move it over just a little bit. There. Okay, so this is a, a dovetail saw. And my saws have these little wee tiny teeth out here that make it easier to start. Now, you've never ever used a dovetail saw, so this could be interesting. You hold it like a, you cradle a baby's hand, very, very light touch. And your index finger sits over here like that. I'll do the first cut and then you can do the next three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an anchor point with my opposite index finger and thumb. And I need this cut to be perpendicular, meaning I need it to be parallel to that line. If it's off at all, we can't work with it. So I'm going to carefully set it in position so that as I look on the right side of the blade, all I see is the pen line. You can see that? Mm -hmm. I use those little teeth to get the saw started. <laughs> Now once I've got just enough of a groove that I can catch my thumb in, I'm going to go to the big teeth on the back and that will speed up my cut. Now I'll go down until I get to that line and then I stop. Okay, now you try the next one. So cut on this side of that line and you want to follow that angle as best you can. Okay. Yeah, you're going to look on this side, use your index finger and thumb. Now remember how I told you to hold it? The index finger goes out there. Very comfortable grip. But, but hold it secure, but very, very loose. Okay. Is that good? So, yeah, well, you no want to always make sure that you have, don't even think about that one right now. Just kind of, you, you did see you're holding the saw at that angle, so just let it go. Meaning don't try to adjust it once you start. What you want to really pay attention to is this. That line and the saw cut have to be parallel to each other. <laughs> Now go to the back, meaning use these big teeth. Now I'm going to have you suggest something real quick. Mm. You always want to keep a nice straight line right up like this. So if you have to make any corrections, do them with your feet. Move your feet over a little bit more. There you go. And I always keep the sawdust off of there so I can see. Okay. Right, now try to finish the cut. your blade. That's it. Go right down until you get to that baseline that we did with the marking. Right there? Okay, yep. Now, I'm going to put the saw, I'm going to leave the saw in here for a second. What we need to do is we need to check and see if that is square. So the easiest way to do it is to take your square and put it on the board and then move it over like this. And you can see how that's off a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I typically say if it's, if, if, it's, if it's within an eighth of an inch over say three inches, I'm gonna do a little bigger square, then you'd be okay. That one might be right on the border, so let's check it. This is actually a four inch square. So if I put that up against the saw blade, you know what? We might be able to get away with that. Let's let's try it. Okay, take it out and do the next one. Now you're going to come the other way. So this one's a little bit different because you know, hold your saw with your finger, index finger pointing up. This time you're going to look on this side of the blade. So when you create your anchor point, you can't see the blade because of your thumb. So you pull your thumb back like this to help support your finger. And I didn't mention this earlier, but you always have a little bit of light lateral pressure against your finger so that when you start sawing, your saw won't accidentally move that way. And because you've got an anchor point here, it can't go that way. So line it up. Again, you want to be able to see the blade, uh, pardon me, the red line, and you want to keep the saw parallel to it. Good move. You always make your adjustments with your feet, not with your body, because if you move it with your body, you'll go back into that position that's most comfortable, and you don't want that. Okay, keep all of your red line. I can move over just a little bit more. Like that? Yeah. Use your little teeth to get it started. Blow the sawdust out so you don't... Ooh. 
Remember the last pressure. Now use your big teeth. I forgot to mention, missionaries get an afternoon a week that they can do something else. And this is something else. <laughs> Let's check this one. This one actually looks really good. Your father's going to think we're setting them up, but look at that. Wow. That's pretty close. You must have a really good teacher. Uh, Alright, one more. Okay, I always wipe the sawdust out of the teeth. Now, try doing this. A little more support for the for your uh, for the blade for the blade as far as an anchor point goes. And I tend to use my nail. The reason is, if you use your skin, it doesn't slide as easily. So I've got my finger kind of cocked forward like that, so it's actually resting against my fingernail, and that'll just allow it to slide a little bit easier. Use your little teeth. Like that? Yep. Nice relaxed grip. Keep that line parallel to the saw. Good. Now, now maintain that parallel cut. your baseline. Okay, let's check that one. Okay, so that one, you're off a little bit, but over four inches, I don't think that's going to matter. The only one I'm the least bit concerned about is over there, but I think we're going to be okay. Now, I've got a new technique, and the new technique is going to make this a whole lot easier than it would have otherwise been. We need to take a plane, and we're not going to cut the waste out. Normally we would have cut this piece off and we would have cut this piece out and we would cut that piece off. But before we do that, we're going to use this as our guide. And sometimes there's a little bit of sawing fuzz that we have to get rid of. I'm going to take my pin board and the part we wrote on is always going to be the outside pieces. So it goes together like this. That's how we keep things in order. Put the plane up against it. Sometimes easier if you actually put the board over here like that. And then I'll lock this in the vise. Slide the plane back and we're going to create a little bit of a bridge. And we're going to set this. Remember that little ledge we cut? Well, when we move it up like that, it puts it in perfect position. Now, I've made this new knife, this new mark marking knife. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that down in here in the saw curve because it's made out of the same steel that the saw, dovetail saw was and then we're going to pull that through and leave a mark but we have to affect, we have to account for the fact that this has some thickness so what I'm going to do is take my marking gauge I'm going to take my dovetail saw and something you may not be aware of is this saw these teeth are bent. Each tooth is bent. This first one is bent this way, the next one's bent that way. So that when you actually make a saw kerf, it's a little bit wider than this part of the blade. If it wasn't, it would jam. I'm going to set this down on this piece of wood. I'm going to undo my marking gauge. I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to drop that cutter down until it touches the wood. And then I'll lock it. And now that's going to represent the thickness of the saw kerf. Okay? I'm going to come in here. I'm going to reference the brass part on the bottom piece. I'm going to put the top piece, the tailboard on. I'm going to slide it over until it touches the cutter. Okay. Now that will offset this board from the bottom one by the exact thickness of the saw curve. Now on this one I'm going to do the right side of the tail. So I'll reach down through like this and drag it through, leaving a nice mark in the end of this board. 
Then I'll come over to this one and do the same thing. Reach down through. A couple of poles makes it a little bit deeper. Now I need to go the other way. If the board was not the same thickness and I did it over here, I would throw it off a little bit. So I'm going to reference off the same side. I'm just going to do the reverse. I'm going to put the brass on the top piece, slide it over until the cutter touches the bottom piece, and now we've offset in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to go to the left side. I'm going to reach down through and pull the blade through and then do the same thing over here. Okay, we'll lift this off. Now we've got marks that are the exact thickness of the saw curve and all we have to do is put the blade right in there and finish the cut. Now one of these didn't actually two of them didn't go all the way down so I'm going to fix that before we finish the joint. Now I take my little square I get rid of this little bit of burr take my square over like this and I'm going to draw a line it makes it a little easier to follow from our marking gauge mark up to those marks that we just made and then I'm going to put an X on the side we cut on. So actually we don't even need to pay attention to that because our saw curve has already started. Final thing we do before you start cutting, I want to make sure that this is standing plumb okay, and it is. Now the only difficult part here is you have to follow the line because these cuts have to be perpendicular. As far as starting it, you're going to put it right in that saw curve and just go ahead and finish your cut. So you're watching this line down there. And with a bit of practice, you'll actually learn to make... So it's got to be straight up and down? Yeah, perpendicular. A bit of practice, you'll be able to make those cuts just because of gravity alone. But in the beginning, you got to follow the line. I think your companion's been cutting dovetails when he should have been doing work. <laughs> okay, do the next one. Well, I, I, you know what, just out of economy, meaning you always want to make yourself as efficient as possible, if you've done this one and your position is all right, you go and do this one. Then turn and do that one. The other reason too is I often use a bench lamp. So I would have my bench lamp set up so that I could see what I'm doing and then you only have to move it once if you make all of the left cuts and then all the right cuts. So go ahead and do this one next. You're going to be particularly looking on this side. You told me you took some kind of shop in high school? Grade 7. Yeah. Wood shop? Yeah. Good for you. The teacher would be proud of you. <laughs> Alright, now go and do the other ones. Take the sawdust out of the teeth and it, and it doesn't drop and obscure your line on you. You just have to have a sensitive enough touch that when you put the saw in that kerf, it stays there and starts. It doesn't jump out. Which side do I look on this side? Well, I, I, I misled you on that last one because typically what I would have done on this cut, I would have been looking on this side of the blade. On, on the one you're about to do, because this is the part I'm keeping, yeah, that's, I just, I, I would probably look on the right side of the blade.
because I typically <laughs> would have looked on this side of the blade. Watching, I was wondering. I was watching, like, this, yeah. this is a lot harder. Well, than I was I trying to screw you up, but I haven't been able to yet. Okay. If I make it too easy, then you won't come on Saturday. <laughs> Have a look at these cuts on this side. So that one, you left a you left a little bit of material on here. Oops. So we can fix that right now. Let me show you how I would do it. What he's done is he's crossed his line. If the good news is he's gone, he's crossed his line and gone into the waste. If you went the other way, then we can't fix it. But we can fix this. So what I need to do is just trim some of the material off of here. So I'm going to get my lamp on this side. I'm going to get the saw down there just a little ways and then I'm going to bend it like this, put some pressure. I'm going to use this to lever against to force the saw to cut on this side. And I'm going to go down there and see if I can't just trim that a little bit. you got to go real slow and don't put any downward pressure because the saw is always wanting to jump into the open side on the right. We want it to literally start a new kerf on the left. And by twisting it and leveraging it against that waste, it'll do that for you. Okay, one more pass maybe. All right, now what we got to do is come in here and cut this waste out. So grab that saw. This is called a fret saw. Well, I'll, I'll start to I'll start to cut up here, and then you finish it. What we're going to do with this has a little wee thin blade. Is drop it down, and then as you start sawing, turn it. Try to saw as close as you can to that line, okay? Then you want to go right down to the bottom. Stay just above the line, don't go below it, but get as close to the line as you can. And that blade is actually twisted, so when you go to set it in there, you'll notice what you have to do is bend it over like that, then it'll drop down. And th the reason we twist it, if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to finish this cut. So by twisting it, a horizontal cut means that the frame now stays up here like this. So we can make that cut by going all the way to the bottom and the frame doesn't bump into the end of the board. Stay above the line. Don't want to get too much out of an angle. I never used this thing before. Drop down. I'll get you started. Okay. Now just watch the line and don't go below it. <clears throat> okay. That's the right angle? Well, you'll know when it starts to cut. Okay. If it dips down, then you've got to turn it down. I suspect that's too high, so we're going to go down like that. Go. Blow the sawdust out. That will come away from your line. Okay. You've got to drop it down further because you're getting too close to your line. You want to try to stay level. That's just something that will come with practice. That's good. The closer you stay to that line, the less material you have to chisel. This is angled, so if oh. you continue to do what you're doing, you're going to cut into the back, back of this. So as you get close, you then have to mirror this angle with your blade. So you've got to eventually bring your saw around like that to finish this cut without going into the back side of the pin. Yeah, a little more bend down there, you're also going to go too low. Tell by the noise and the sound that it's almost cut through. Okay, don't cut into your pin. There. It's like being a dentist.
Okay, now the next one. Oh. Were you tired? Stressful. <laughs> you want a little Tori to cover for you? Do you want to try it? Sure. Okay, you do. Because this is Calgary versus Southern Alberta. Watch me butcher it for you. Go, Tabor. Can, there you go. Now, okay, now as soon as you start moving, you can turn down like that. Keep this hand over here. Right here? Yeah. Slowly move your body around a little bit so that you can bring that saw around because you've got to follow. You start on that angle, you got to end up on this angle. Right. Blow the saw to stop so you don't go below your line. And if you start going too low, you just have to drop the frame down. <coughs> Chop out the waist. If we look at this, you went a little too low because I can't see the scribe line left. Oops. But it's close enough that it may not matter. So what we're gonna do, we we'll use this piece of wood so that we don't damage my bench. We're gonna flip it over like this. And we have to chop out the rest of that. So we take a chisel and you set it right in that line, and that's why you need a nice deep scribe line. So when, listen to this. Can you hear it? It'll actually drop into that line. And you get it. I want to make sure that the chisel's sharp enough. I was cutting some hardwood with this. Yeah, it needs a little bit of work on the edge. Do that real quick. A little bit of lubricant. Set the blade down on that primary bevel. Raise it up just a little off the primary bevel. It takes three or four seconds. As soon as you can feel a burr on the back side of the blade, then you move to the fine stone. Raise it up just a little bit higher than I did on the coarse one and then flip it over, work off the burr. Done. So if you oh, if you uh, do that before you let the, get the ed let the edge get too degraded, then it doesn't take very long. So now we'll do this, drop it in there, and do the other side. Now see if we can save this one. Awfully close. Now I need some light on this. Okay, so we get right over next to the pin. This is the pin. Put the chisel in the scribe line. I get to the other side of it. And you're going in slightly at a handle, right? Well, very slight. All right, now, just before we work on this, we've got to go back. And we've got to remove this piece. We'll do this one. Drop down, just off the line. You can make this stock up really quickly. Get rid of that waste. Now, I'm going to get you to do this one. This is a tough cut. We need to remove this piece of waste. And in order to get a nice spot to start from, I'm going to come in on the waist side and I'm going to make a little V cut next to that line. Flip that out. Now, get the saw. And as you start cutting, your saw has a little ledge to cut up against. So, you want to keep your saw on the X side, and you want to go, let me, let me make it even deeper and more pronounced. Get that stuff out of there. Okay, and you see what I mean? So put your saw on the waist side, so you're going to be looking on this side. You always want to watch the side you're keeping. Use your little teeth to get it started. Square yourself up with your feet. 
Use your finger as an anchor. Like that? Yeah. That good? Yeah, you gotta follow that scribe line though. It's gotta be a perpendicular cut. A lot of pressure here. Yeah. This one up is going home early. Okay. Now we'll get all the Tori to do the next one. And while shirt and tie is not mandatory, it's recommended for well-dressed woodworkers. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Do the same thing over here. Get rid of that. Now I'll go down and... So as not to put one at a greater advantage over the other. <laughs> This is not a competition, please, no wagering. <laughs> All right, now get the sawdust out of your teeth. I always in that habit, and then it doesn't drop on there and obscure it. And you're gonna be looking on this side, because this is the side that you have to protect. This body language is all awesome. Yeah, but I'm in the middle of the cut. Oh, is that When you do it, when you're cutting, you're trying to make a square cut. Now, you couldn't see it because you were focusing on the line. But if I were to look down like that, I should see the saw square, but you were, you were over like this. So as a result, if you look here real close, I don't know if you can tell or not, you can see a little bit of the line left here, but none down here. Fortunately, we can save that. So what we'll do is come in here with a chisel and set it right on the scribe line. And then just pair right into the side of the tail. Now we want to make sure we don't have any line left. We don't on either side. And on this side, we have a little bit of material left. But again, we didn't go below, so that's good. We'll come in here and just push that chisel through. Check this line. Flip it over and check that line. Now all we have to do is chisel that out. I'm going to get you to do that. Nice thing about that little ledge is you can put your chisel right up against it. So go ahead, take that chisel, it's sharp, the mallet, chop down. Now you want to make sure that this chop, we always stand, we always do it like this. If we do it like this, we can't tell perpendicular. Mm -hmm. But if we do it like this, we can see that the chisel is perpendicular. And when we want it, when we chop, we want the chisel either to be like this or slightly like that. We don't want to do this. If we do that, we leave a bump in there. We have to go in and remove after. So I try to I try to aim for perpendicular and if anything, just slightly angled away from the piece. Okay. Just right down the middle or start well, the edge? You want to go right up to the corner and then you want to do the next one right to that corner. Now before you chop, you get you get it in position. the chisel here for you. Go about halfway. You don't want to go all the way through. Okay, there. and do the next one. Pull it up. You got to be careful when you had to do the chisel because you don't want to bruise. We're on the inside, so it doesn't matter. But if you did that on the outside, you're going to see that in your finished joints. You always have to be very careful. One of the reasons why it's so good to start working with pine is because it teaches you that you have to be extremely careful with your tools. Okay, I'm going to give you a visual. Get it like you mean it. Okay, oh, oh, don't go all the way to the, through my bench. Now, this side. Okay, I'm going to show you a little something here. Sometimes if you left too much, I did it, you leave too much material here, particularly on a hardwood, when you start chiseling, this excess material is going to try to push your chisel this way and you may end up going below that line. You don't want that to happen. So if I had too much material, I would go in, I would do one chop right here first to get rid of some of that and then set my chisel. However, this is pine and the chisel is really sharp. You should be able to set your chisel right in the gauge line 
and make your chop. I'll show you something else too. The way I do this, see what I'm doing? I anchor with my thumb to help get that in position. If you're up here like this in midair, it's a little bit hard to control. Or you can hold your chisel down here and I anchor with my finger and I get it into position and then chop. Now you I don't know which one to do. <laughs> Whichever's more comfortable, either down low yeah. or up high using your thumb on your mallet hand. Okay, I'll give you a visual. Now you're eventually going to meet that other chop, so kind of slow down when you know you're getting close. Okay, that's good. Don't pry this when you bring it out. There you go. A lot of people will pry this way to get it free and then they wreck that line. Well, that's part of your finished joint. Is that good? Just make sure it lines up with that inside corner. Give you a visual. Good. Should you feel it break through? I think so. Yep. Right? Now, what I do at this point is just push out that waste. I always work front to back. This is my front. I have more control over what happens on the front than the back. Okay, that looks nice and clean. Now the last thing I'm going to do is come in here with my chisel. I choke up and I'm going to just cut the corners, what we call that chamfering. It's a joint. Now we only do this on the inside and we don't start out here. We come in a little bit and this is going to allow the joint to go together a little easier. Then we'll come in here and we'll just clip those off. We're not going to glue this one, but before we put them together, we've got to come in here and just get rid of, again, working front to back, get rid of any material that's left in the corner. And if you're unsure that you did it right, what you can do is take your square and set it on the floor like that to make sure Okay, there's some bumps in there. That may prevent it from sitting or seating properly. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna get rid of some of this high stuff. We kind of destroyed our line, so it was hard to tell where we needed to be. <laughs> it's all right. Whoops. Line destroyers. I'm sorry, said you. Destroying, <laughs> destroying Angel did that. Okay, now you can put the joint together. So, like this piece, normally you put glue on it. Line it up first. Where's the pin mark? What side? Line it up. So you want to kind of start it a little bit by hand. Put it into position. Should you use a rubber mat? Okay. Okay. Tap it with your hammer. Just till it seats. Like I said, we normally would glue that up. Now, I'm going to plane it. And then we'll get a close look and see just how well it went together. The plane it just means, or the reason to do this is just to get rid of pencil marks. It's better than I thought. Flip it over. Now it's going to come apart. Dave, can you hold? <laughs> Brace it. All right, now let's have a look. Got a few little gaps. But other than that, not too shabby for our first crack. <laughs> out of 10. Wow. Out of 10? Come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not bad. In fact, if we glued that, some of those joint, some of those uh, gaps will disappear. But that would be, um, that would be an 8. 
Now let's give Elder Tory a little credit. He did some of it. Yeah, well, it's a team effort. Team yeah. effort. <laughs> Okay, uh, check out my site, robsworkshop.com. In fact, if you go to free month, ah, free or free month? I think it's just www.freemonth on Rob's Workshop. Wow, that's long. www.freemonth on Rob's Workshop.com. It'll give you a free month. And these guys said if you go to mormon.org, you can find out what the missionaries do. Okay, we'll see you in the shop.